Here I have a very simple GraphQL API that has a query for cart. I can give the ID to the cart, and from this I can also fetch the ID, the total items, as well as the items themselves. Now, all of this data is mocked. If we move into the code, we can see here that we have the schema definition that's using GraphQL Yoga, and we create the schema from that, and we pass in the types. Now, creating the resolver for this query cart wasn't an easy ride. I didn't have any help from my ID to tell me what any of these fields were and what the shape of the response should look like. I also didn't know what the type of the ID or if there were any arguments passed to this query. So this isn't a great experience, but we can improve this with something called Garth. Let's go ahead and remove this schema from this file and we'll remove the import for create schema. We're going to use Garth to create all the different types that we need and all of those are inferred by the schema that we create using Garth. So let's open a new window and we'll paste the schema that we have before. We'll begin by installing Garth from NPM and then we'll import some helpers from Garth. And then we'll get started creating this schema that contains the type for query, the type for cart, cart item, and then that all important money type. So let's begin with the query type and here we'll create a new const called query and we'll invoke g.type and then we'll give the name query and then we can provide the shape of the query type. We only have one field, which is cart. Now we can use g to reference another type and here we'll reference a type we haven't created, but we'll create that next. And then we can specify that there is an argument for this field and that that argument is ID. And we'll use g.id here to specify the type of this ID field. And we can see here we have a g-string type what? And then we can provide a description for this cart as well. So let's provide some text here. Now let's move on to creating the type for cart. And again, we'll use g.type. We'll give the name of our type, which is cart. And now we'll create the shape of our cart type. We can see here that we have the field ID, total items, items, and subtotal. So let's create these inside of our type using Garth. So we'll specify the ID field is of the type ID. And that total items is of the in type. And just like we did before with the reference, we'll now specify that items is a list and we'll use the reference cart item and then we use dot list. And finally for subtotal, we'll pass g.ref money. Now let's go ahead and create the cart item type and we'll invoke g.type. We'll give the name cart item. Then we'll provide the shape and all of the fields for the cart item. And here we just have two fields, ID of the type ID and name of the type string. You can go on to provide more fields and values for, the, for these, such as default values, if this is an input type, as well as any deprecation notices, descriptions, or whether this is optional or required. We'll just specify now that we have two fields, ID and name, and then we'll finish up by creating the type for money. We'll provide the type name money to the first argument, and again, we'll pass the shape with all of our fields for our money type, and we'll use the G helper to provide the types for these fields. And here we'll specify that the type of this amount field is of the type int, and then for the field formatted, we'll specify that this is a string field. If we hover one of these types, we can see here that we get that TypeScript type that contains all of the different generics for the different Garth types. So we have money, int, and string here. And if we go down to cart item, we can see that cart item is of this particular shape. And if we go to cart, we can also see that this has a specific shape as well. And we have those generics for lists, references, and much more. And if we have a look at what we had previously, the shape of the resolver map here simply returned a cart with a static object, and it returned the ID from what was passed in the arguments. So to create the resolvers, I will create a new const called resolvers, and then we'll go on to use infer resolvers that we imported previously, and then we'll pass two arguments to this, and the first will be the shape of the resolvers themselves. So here we'll specify query is of the type of query that we created above, and then we can go on to provide the shape of the context and the info argument if you want to. Now we can already see that we have some help from our IDE resolvers. We can see if we hover, that is missing the type query. So let's go ahead now and provide that query. Now we've got some help from the IDE. So now we'll specify the cart resolver and here we'll create an inline function and we can see the arguments passed here is parent, but we'll ignore that. Then we have the arguments and we can already see inside of the IDE that we have one argument, which is of the type string and it's called ID. So I'll call args here and then we don't need anything else from this. Then for the purposes of this video, we'll simply return a simple static object. Now, thanks to inferred resolvers, we can see the shape of that type that must be returned. And here we can see we have the non-nullable ID field. So we'll go ahead and return the args. And if we call args, we can see that we have the ID type that's passed to that. So let's return the total items here. Now let's return the items and we'll pass an array here. And we can see here the objects inside of this array must contain the fields ID and name. So let's update that to be item one. And then for the name, we can see that this is also a string. 
and we can update that as well. Let's finally satisfy this cart resolver by providing the value for subtotal. And if we hover subtotal, we can see that the shape contains the fields amount and formatted. I'm going to provide a string value here. And for the formatted amount, I will also provide another string value as well. Now I've provided two strings to both of these fields, but one is expecting number. And I can already see inside of my IDE that something's up. So I hover over cart here and scroll down. We can see that the type of the amount that was provided is not compatible. And that string is not assignable to the type number. So at this point, we don't need to run our GraphQL API to run into any errors. I get feedback right inside of my IDE. So now that everything looks good, all that's left to do is invoke build schema that we imported above from Garth. Here, I'm going to create the const schema. And then for the first argument, we'll pass an object which contains G and resolvers. Now this is all we need to do to pass to GraphQL Yoga the schema. Now if we go back to graphical and we run another query here, and this time we'll pass a different ID to the field, and then we'll return the ID and we execute this GraphQL operation, we can see here that everything is working as it was before. Now if we open the documentation and we go to query, here we can see that we have that description that we provided, and we have the arguments provided in the correct type, as well as the card type has all of the fields in their types that we provided to Garth instead of our code. And we can also see in the Garth documentation all of the different supported types. So we're not constrained to just use an ID, string, and int. We can even use things like interfaces, input types, and also define your own scalar types, as well as union types, enumerations, booleans, floats, and so much more. If you want to learn more about Garth and what they're doing, you can go to their website. We'll also explore in another video how this pairs well with GQTY to give a TRPC-like experience when working with and building GraphQL APIs.